Did you know the basic structure of your favourite comedy comes from ancient Greece? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today we're going to explore the history, plays and playwrights of ancient Greek comedy. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon for notifications so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Greek theatre, and some say theatre itself, originated in classical Athens in the 6th century BCE. Plays were performed as part of festivals in open-air theatres known as the Theatron, such as the Theatre of Dionysus, and the audience would sit in the semicircular orchestra. Competitions were held each year as part of different festivals, such as the City Dionysia for tragedy plays and the Lanaia for comedy. We'll get to the Lanaia later. The Greek god Dionysus was the god of wine, revelry and theatre, and he was honoured at these festivals and competitions. Theatre was less of a social outing as it is in the modern day, and more of a political and religious necessity for all citizens of Athens. The origin of Greek comedy has been lost to time. However, we know from pottery depicting men as actors dressing up in wild costumes that it was a firmly established genre by the 6th century BCE. Ancient Greek comedy can be split into three distinct categories, old comedy, middle comedy, which has been mostly lost to us, and new comedy. But they all used crude and sexual humour and would poke fun at contemporary issues, politicians, philosophers, and fellow poets and artists. The actors wore highly decorated masks and wonderful costumes in order to portray more than one character, which were sometimes human and sometimes not. Ancient Greek comedy all followed a fairly conventional structure, made up of four component parts. The first part was the paradox, which was when the chorus, which could be made up of as many as 24 performers, would enter the stade, stadium, and perform a few song and dance routines, which sometimes introduced the plot. They would be dressed up in wild and outlandish costumes, which could be anything from bees with huge stingers, knights riding other men as a horse, or even kitchen utensils. The next part was the Aegon, which was a witty verbal contest that would have a fantastical plot and many fast-changing scenes, which advanced the story. If references to specific audience members who may have actually been in the audience are taken into account, then there may have even been improvisation in this part of the comedy. The third component was the Parabasis, which was when the chorus would speak directly to the audience or to the poet or author to enlarge or explain a point. And the final section was the Exodus, which was another round of singing and dancing routines from the chorus as the play concluded. Keep in mind that all the performers would have been professional actors, dancers and singers, and they all would have been male, even if some of the characters were female. For comedy, the major competition was an Athenian-only festival known as the Lanaia. The festival was held during January in honour of Dionysus. Every aspect of these performances, including the chorus, the costumes, the musicians, and even the rehearsal time, was all funded by a Korogos, who was a private citizen of Athens. To be a Korogos was an honour and held great prestige. Due to the use of masks so that actors could play more than one character, they had to rely on their use of voice and gestures, since their facial expressions were hidden. Costumes were also very important, and a common outfit was tights and a short tunic, which revealed a fake and usually quite large phallus. This comic scene can be found on Greek pottery. Old comedy refers to comedy written in the 5th century BCE, and the earliest comedy that has survived to us today is Aristophanes' Acarnians, which was originally performed in 425 BCE. Old comedy was deeply engaged in the political situation of the time that they were composed, but it incorporated fantastical elements like giant creatures and actors jumping across huge geographical distances. 
Old comedy used satire, crude jokes, parodies, puns, and colourful language. And modern day taboo topics such as religion, sex, and politics were all on the table. Aristophanes' works are our only representative of old comedy to have survived, but during his time he had several successful plays, including Acarnians, Knights, and The Frogs. The Frogs was so successful that it gave Aristophanes the great honour of a wreath made out of sacred olives, and it had a repeat performance. Aristophanes composed a total of 44 plays, but only 11 have survived. Other poets who would have been rivals of Aristophanes were Cratinus and Eupolis, but none of their plays survive. In the late 4th century and into the early 3rd century BCE, a new style of comedy arrived, which has been called New Comedy. Some scholars suggest an intermediary category called Middle Comedy, which was less about political themes and more concerned with mythological parodies, but no full text survived from this time. New Comedy was more focused on domestic scenes and was composed of five acts. The chorus became less important to the plot of the story, and the plays revolved around characters such as cooks, soldiers, pimps, and cunning slaves. These plays had less personal attacks, and were more concerned with fictional characters and their relationships with family, other classes, or foreigners. We know a bit more about the writers of New Comedy, including Philemon, who wrote 97 plays, Dephilus, who wrote around 100 plays, and Philippides. However, Menander, who wrote around 100 plays, is considered to be the greatest poet of New Comedy, even though Philemon actually won more festivals than he had. Menander's work survived longer than the other popular New Comedy poets, and today the Discolus, which was originally performed in 316 BCE, is the most complete surviving play, although we also have large portions of six of his other plays. Menander's plays were quoted over 900 times in secondary sources which have survived, and Latin playwrights often adapted his works. Ancient Greek comedy continued to be popular through both the Hellenistic and the Roman times, with many of them being performed again and again. The basic components of Greek comedy became standard in later works, and still inform the structure of comedic plays, films, and TV shows today. Have you read any ancient Greek comedy? Did you find it funny? Let us know why or why not you thought it was funny down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a not-for-profit organisation, so if you'd like to support our work, you can hit the link in the top corner of the screen, or you can follow the link to our Patreon down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video.